Hi, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to talk a little bit about two, not necessarily ever look, but not often thought about processes or things we need to consider going into fall gardening. Um, a lot of you might know this. If you do, just click through it. I'm doing these for me and try to pass on some information. But one of them is not just calendar, Looking at nighttime temperatures on a long range forecast, this weekend's a good example of that. I took off Friday wanting to be able to plant all my fall stuff and I'm not gonna be able to do it. We don't have the nighttime temperatures in the 10 day forecast, so the trend's not going in that direction. Um, I will be able to plant Swiss chard and that's about it. Getting beds prepped, I'll have all that done, but lettuce, spinach, two different lettuces I'm doing. My broccoli, which is getting too big to be inside, but I can't put it outside yet. So I'm kind of in a pickle there. It's just gonna be too hot. I don't have the temperatures for it. I don't care if the calendar says it's early September and we should start getting to that period. It just isn't there yet. Um, a lot of those leafy greens need that nighttime temperature, soil temperatures cool to germinate. I could plant them, but I'd run a risk of them not germinating and rotting in the ground. And they might sit there uh, and sit there for three weeks and all of a sudden come up, I might get poor germination. So I'm just gonna wait. I'll wait until I see that 10 day forecast, start seeing a couple of nights showing up in the 50s, kind of show me that trend. I can't worry about daytime temperatures in central Oklahoma. So in 7A, and I'm sure it's that way, all the way across 7A, 7B, we can have mid upper seventies all the way anytime during the winter. We get those spells like that. But it's that nighttime temperature that's gonna cool the soil down as we get less daylight. Which brings me to the second, one of the other things we don't think about in that term is, so there's actually three things. Daylight. Those plants need that six hours or so to eight hours of daylight. And that's gonna change in your time zone. Um, been thinking about this for years. I grew up in Maryland, it's different than here. So I looked it up, just to give an example. Um, Cooksville, Tennessee, right on the edge of the Eastern and Central time zone. And I'm in Central Oklahoma and I'm close to the mountain time zone, about three and a half hours west, I'm in mountain time zone. Today, there's an hour and a half difference of daylight between the two. Well, as we get shorter and shorter days, that's gonna matter a lot. I am good into early December, still having plenty of daylight. Um, when I was going up the East Coast, it wasn't the case. So that does matter. And sometimes you just gotta think about it. We might not be able to get that broccoli crop all the way through. It might not happen if that daylight gets ahead, ahead of us. I'm hoping that I can get a fall broccoli crop. I didn't get a spring when it got too warm. Try it in the fall and I might not, but I'll give it a try. Brings me to the other thing, nutrition, plant fertilizer in the fall. It is different than what we plant in the summer. And the reason I say that in the summer, we're planting fruiting vegetables a lot peppers and squashes and tomatoes and we are trying to promote fruiting we're not so worried for the nitrogen early on we give it a little bit of nitrogen then we kind of switch over with more uh, phosphorus and try to generate blooms we're looking for like a one tooth one or not a real balanced fertilizer okay Potassium is really important with fruiting vegetables, right? So we're looking for that high middle number. I'm gonna show you a couple of fertilizers I used. And then now though, with leafy greens, which is a lot of my cabbage, I need to get in the ground and I can't yet. We're trying to go plant. We're not worrying about it flowering. So I switched to more of a more balanced across the board fertilizer and a little more nitrogen than what I'm worried about with tomatoes and peppers. This is just an example of something that I've used. It's a um, 769. 
and see how we have more emphasis in uh, potassium and phosphorus and less on nitrogen. A little bit on nitrogen on this one, but it did well for me. I also use a liquid fish fertilizer and this will be used more as a direct water. Now, I don't like foliar feeding as my leafy greens get more mature. I just, I'd rather soak them. It's kind of a pain in the butt. The other thing that I wanted to mention that I've shown in a couple of videos, I'm a huge fan, massive fan of alfalfa cubes or pellets and my bed prep. Um, it's already on all my fall stuff. It is ready. It's breaking down. It's pretty high nitrogen, you know. Um, it varies from 2 to 5% depending on which one you get. And it has a lot of trace minerals in it as well that are very beneficial. But they're slow release. It needs to break down to be available for the plant. So, I guess the big thing to think about is our fertilizer requirement is different for fall greens and fall garden than it is in the spring. Let me just keep that in mind. You'll be a little more successful. The uh, only thing I'm really worried about is broccoli right now. I don't know if I'll have enough time, but everything else with our weather here, I'll have lettuce up until Christmas. I'll cabbage will mature in time. All of them can handle the frost and the freezes and things pretty well. Broccoli can handle light frost, but I just don't know if I'll have the time. So thank you. Please hit the subscribe button. I hope this helped.